Chris Spiker. I'm Mary Goldstein. We are here with Tom Barnes from Smart Water Expo. Hey, welcome, Tom. Thank you for having me. So today is Saturday. You're right in the middle of the uh, home show over at uh, the fairgrounds. Yeah. Annual event, uh, Smart Water Expo, mm -hmm. and that's part of AVEC. Uh, yeah, it's actually uh, sponsored by the Antelope Valley State Water Contractors Association. Uh, AVEC Water Agency, uh, as a state water contractor, is partnering uh, with um, Palmdale Water District and Little Rock Creek Irrigation District. And those three agencies are the state agencies that take water from the aqueduct and treat it and bring it into the homes. That's a beautiful aqueduct. Yeah. And that was built in? Uh, it came through the Antelope Valley in about 1972, about the same time as a freeway. Wow. That was a, an all-star uh, period of time, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the crowds followed. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so what's the, expo, uh, what's the expo all about? Well, the expo, this is the second year we've done the water, uh, Smart Water Expo uh, as part of the home show. Uh, previous to that, and starting in 2014, we had the Smart Landscaping Expo, which, uh, which the drive of that is to try to uh, encourage people to um, conserve water. And remember during 2014 and 2015 range, that was some of the worst time of our drought. And so we uh, wanted to uh, just educate folks. We wanted to also give them opportunities to meet some of the landscape designers, some of the landscape providers, installers, and allow them to uh, come up with some different options on how they can conserve water during those drought periods. Uh, since that time, it's, it's shifted over more to an overall water educational type uh, expo, but we do still include some of our partners, uh, the landscaping designers, uh, the providers for um, the landscaping materials and the, um, also the educators in water. What are the different components of saving water in a house? Well, there's, there's many different components. I think probably the biggest way you could probably save water and save a lot of money is to actually refill your uh, bottle of water. Uh, you know, you pay probably about 100 times the amount of uh, cost in bottled water than you would from water from your tap. Wow. And the quality of that water is not as good as the quality from your tap, believe it or not, um, because it's under much stricter uh, regulations through the state and through the federal EPA. You know, I'm thinking, I, I'm buying these 24, and I, I go buy some of the big boxes and these cases of water sitting out sure. in the sun, sure. and I'm thinking, oh my <laughs> gosh, isn't there something about water? I mean, sun going through plastic into water, yeah. and then you you pay a state deposit on every sure. single container. Sure. So these little bottles of water cost you. Yeah, they cost you quite a bit. The convenience, we like the convenience of it. And I'm, yeah. I'm guilty too of uh, going to Costco and buying the big cases of water because it's convenient. But, uh, but if, it, even if we were to use those and refill them, we'd save quite a bit of water. So that's one way we can save water and save money. Um, certainly uh, a big part of our water, probably over 50% of our water goes into landscaping. Right. And landscaping um, has, uh, the water used in landscaping here locally has improved greatly as far as the conservation effort uh, for the folks of the animal Valley. So there are a lot of ways to have a nice, nice yard mm -hmm. without doing like I did and just taking everything out and putting in decomposed granite. Exactly, and that's a great thing you're going to see at the, at the uh, home show, what you're going to see at the Water Expo building and the Van Dam building there. What you're going to see is you're going to see uh, demonstrations of these types of uh, options that you have, uh, you know, alternatives to live grass and, uh, you know, bushes that take a lot of water. You're at the uh, Home and Garden Show all weekend. Yeah. Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. Yep. Annual event. How many years have we had a Water Expo? Uh, Water Expo has, uh, this is the second year we've had it, uh, the Water Expo itself. But again, back in 2014, we started uh, what was called the Smart Landscaping Expo, which was, again, focused on trying to get folks to, uh, to look at different options rather than turf and large areas and, and even pools. We even had uh, folks there that uh, we were able to educate uh, individuals on how to better manage their pools so that they could uh, use less water. I'm at a buddy's house the other day, and he says, I wouldn't have a pool that didn't have a cover. Yeah. So I didn't ask him why, but I thought it's probably evaporation. Yeah, evaporation and maintenance. It, you know, yeah, so there's no leaves in his pool. Easier maintenance, yep. <laughs> so that you spend uh, uh, some money and you get a cover, and then you don't have problems with the pool. Yeah, exactly. And that's just one of many things you can do in a house. Yeah, exactly. A, a pool, a standard pool uses about the same amount of water uh, through evaporation alone as a lawn would. So that's a good idea. Wow. How you can, yeah, you can, that's how you can determine how much water you want to use 
in your pool, it's about it's about the same surface area as, a, as what a lawn would take for water. You know, I'm a bit of a tree hugger, and I just realized that what a waste of water mm. to, to put it on a lawn mm. yeah. for me. You know, especially if it's not going to be verde and green all yeah. the time. If it's going to be brown, yeah, that's beautiful water, and uh, in, when you're in a desert, it's yeah. just not enough to go around. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have we have variations in the amount of water we get here in the desert. So this year, um, you know, in 2019, we're we're fortunate. We have a very good year. We have a lot of water coming down from Northern California because of the snowpack. And uh, but we know not just two two or three years ago we had yeah. almost next to nothing in water coming down. Oh, yeah, from it could Africa. change in one season. Yeah, exactly. And we keep more people keep coming here, yep. being born and coming here. So yeah. Uh, the nice thing about the, the snow is it sticks around yes, and yeah. it finds its way into the rivers. Yes, exactly. So we'll be drinking that for a long time. Yeah, it's our, really our, our longest term source of water. You know, we have our reservoirs as our shorter term source of water, but the snow pack is, is much longer term. How long have you lived in the Antelope Valley? All my life. So, born in 1967. Yeah. So it's a unique area. It's a bowl. If that water doesn't leave this area yeah. except the exactly. evaporation. Yeah, correct. Do we use all the water that goes through the aqueduct? Uh, no, no. A lot of that is, you know, we're just along along that big canal there, so we, we take as much as we can here. Uh, there are big efforts now to take as much as we can, especially this year. In years that we, we are water rich, uh, we want to take as much water as we can, bring it in here locally, and, and do what's called groundwater banking. And groundwater banking is about bringing uh, that surplus water from the aqueduct percolating into the ground here locally so that we can later withdraw it, uh, withdraw that groundwater for uh, Does dry the water times. take a long time to get down to the, the water table? Yeah, it can. It can take, uh, but it's not, not as long as people think, usually. It depends on the areas. You don't have like a well that you can, does it go down a well? Uh, it's percolates through the ground, just like natural, it's basically artificial recharge. So just like what rain would come into uh, the ground and percolate down into that underground basin, um, that's what we're doing here, but artificially we're just we're basically mimicking what nature does naturally. Where do you do that? Uh, we have uh, our largest water bank is called the West Side Water Bank. It's out on the far west side, um, off about 140th Street West and Avenue D. And what's that big seasonal lake we see at Avenue H and the freeway? That's just a settling pond, or yeah, that's just a settling pond and retention basin. That's the old, probably the old Armagosa that goes all the way to. Yeah, uh, yeah Edwards Dry Lake. Yeah, uh, Roseman Dry Lake. Yeah, Roseman. Yeah, and uh, that's another. Actually, uh, brings up another groundwater uh, banking opportunity. We are taking we're taking advantage of with our partners, uh, Palmdale Water District, the City of Palmdale, Los Angeles County Water Works, and we're working on uh, what's called the Upper Amagosa Recharge Project. Right. Another opportunity to bring in more water from the aqueduct when we have it and recharge that here locally. And that's going to be also a kind of a recreational spot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, we're trying to get out there with uh, Mayor Hoffbauer and yeah. do a little video about uh, what's going to go on there. Yeah. So we've uh, completed a lot of the uh, larger scale work that needs to be done on the aqueduct to bring that water in, and and we're moving forward with that project. Should be completed uh, within the next uh, year and a half to two years. Off the subject, but it has to do with water. Lake Hughes, Lake Elizabeth, mm -hmm. aren't they on the fault line? Uh, I believe so, yeah, which a lot of the areas around are yeah. on the fault line. So I would think there's water underneath. I, I couldn't understand why they would go dry. Yeah, yeah, it's because the faults do move, and so sometimes you get intermittent groundwater supplies. Maybe it comes up somewhere else. Yeah, yeah that's possible. And you work at AVEC? Yeah, I work at Animal Valley East Kern Water Agency. Uh, we're a uh, public agency, uh, and we uh, basically bring, uh, our primary goal is to bring water off the aqueduct. and. Uh, we have four treatment plants. We'll bring it through those treatment plants and deliver that to the water retailers who folks, uh, the residents, pay the water bill to. And do you send water all the way to Mojave? Is there like a, a line or water goes all the way out to? Yeah, we have many feeders, untreated feeders and treated uh, water feeders. Our lar yeah, our largest area, uh, largest feeder is an untreated feeder which feeds our water banks, our groundwater recharge, but it also goes all the way out to uh, Mojave and Cal City, and then all the way past Boron. Really? Yeah. That just seems like somebody had a lot of vision to put yeah. that together. Yes, yeah, that was our direct board of directors in the past. Well, everybody needs water in the desert. Yeah. Um, contact information for you? Sure, you can contact me in Animal Valley East Current Water Agency. Our phone number is 661-943-3201.
Uh, you can also email me at uh, tbarnes, that's T-B-A-R-N-E-S, at A-B-E-K dot org. If folks are out at the uh, home show at the fair this weekend, is there anything they should look for in particular? Have fun. Have fun out there and uh, learn some things. Yeah, and look look at alternatives to uh, to maybe some of the landscaping ideas that they have. So. Okay. Talking with Tom Barnes uh, from AVEC, but uh, this weekend you're doing the Smart Water Expo at the Home and Garden Show. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much, Chris. You bet.